cara dia yang amal. Kalau ni kita tengok nanti cangkir itu pun tidak mungkin ini. Nada baik kalau jelas kita itu. We all hope our mother comes back because Nyakong's place, Nikai's family, is uncertain. Yeah. 
One thing is for sure, people are made for flight, and the future belongs to those who dare to dream. I worry about her. Growing up without a mother, will she be able to return to South Sudan? Or will the future be Kakuma? Thank you very much, Celine, for this uh, screening. Uh, the full movie is 74 minutes, I understand, so this is only a part of it, but I think it already gives a lot of impressions of Kakuma. And um, I have the, uh, I had when I saw it for the first time, lots of questions after seeing this movie because it raises issues that really are relevant also for us. It seems like the whole world is on the move, and these people in these camps. Um, well, they leave them again and they come to Europe and this is very relevant for us as well and we see this kind of camps within Europe now. So, um, I hope we will have some discussion. I give the floor to Mr. Di Stefano who is working on this issue of migration, specifically young children, uh, for a long time and uh, please, Manu, the word is yours. Thank you for coming here and first of all, I want to thank you, uh, Ms. Desertea, for this webinar. Uh, share with us this touching, this really touching video. This video shows the, um, the issue of the, I would say, nowhere and no one side of the immigration issue. Um, rights are not the same for everyone in the world, and it's crystal clear to everyone, especially who works in this, in this uh, uh, environment. Uh, but there is another phase of the immigration issue, and it, it is even less known, and it's those regarding the unaccompanied minors, and that's why I'm working on this, and today it will uh, be discussed in my report in the, in the assembly. I will give you some numbers, just to stimulate the discussion maybe, and I will give you the final uh, uh, approach of my report. Just this year, 30,000 minors have uh, applied for asylum in Europe. And uh, the last uh, number that we have in 2015 is of 90,000 minors, unaccompanied minors. Most of them are unaccompanied for several reasons. It could be because they lost their, their own parents during the war, their own um, country of origin, or they were lost during the journey to come to Europe, and it's very common. And the other, the other could be also because they were separated once they get to Europe for trafficking, or uh, for uh, uh, other problems related to the uh, local uh, uh, jurisdiction that, that we have in our own countries. So that situation is very going every year, uh, is worsening every year because the numbers of migration are really uh, higher, higher and higher every year. What we found is that the existing international standards are unequally implemented. By and, and transposed into national regulator, regulatory frameworks. So, uh, what we call in this in this report is to uh, um, to harmonize the procedures. Because what I'm telling to you is that we already have all the best procedures that we can. The framework is crystal clear at an international level. The problem is that each country has transposed it in a different way. So there is no uh, not a certain rights for 
for everyone. We had a, we had a, a meeting with the with the Europol because the, the this argument popped up at the public opinion when Europol in 2015 spread this number of 10,000 uh, uh, children disappeared in Europe. So that's that's why we started with this uh, with this report. Uh, what we found talking with also the NGOs working with children is that uh, we are we have to approach children as children. That looks stupid to say, but it's not actual, and it's not done in this moment. So they need specific communication, explanation at their level of understanding, uh, and they should be heard during all the process since they got to our countries up to when they can leave. So uh, here comes the role of the guardians that we are uh, that is present on the on the report. Uh, well-trained guardians that we don't have now because we face the children with our normal policy uh, the, uh, and the corps working with that. Uh, and we should have sufficient time to, to devote to each children to make them understand the path that how would be the path in our countries. So uh, all in all, the report takes stock on the, of the current situation of unaccompanied migrants, minors, and of those who go missing. And pro propose concrete measures, measures for improving procedures and cooperation aimed at helping children flee in their homes to find the better lives they seek. So, my, 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 what, I, what I want to say, and I will say also the same thing to the uh, Assembly today, is that we, don't, we have a really important uh, role in the society in our, in our own countries. And it's to make them understand at the political level that we have to use the regulatory framework that already is present at what we have the UN uh, uh, talks, talks uh, have done a lot of work on children. So we have a lot of frameworks, but we have to apply it in the same way. And we have to consider children not just as migrants, but just as children. Because we have to remember that we have to do always the best interest of the child is the base of all the regulatory frameworks. So thank you again to Ms. Desuter, and I think we go to the question now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manlio. Your, your report is very relevant in uh, view of uh, the topic we discuss, and also uh, regarding the movie we just uh, screened. Um, I give uh, the floor to the room if people have questions, remarks, statements, uh, because again, this is Kakuma, this is Kenya. It can seem very far from us. Um, I think after seeing the, seeing the movie and listening to the people, this is very close to us, I, I must say. So I think the, the issues are very relevant. How do people live in these camps? 17 years already. Uh, how with sanitation, with uh, security issues? Uh, what hope do people have living in these camps? And um, obviously, they dream of a better life, and that's that's and the world is become a very small place uh, with social media and so on. So this is why they come, uh, they come to, to Europe. And resettlement, I heard 3,000 a year, um, and they are with 200,000 now in this camp. So it's a lottery <coughs> that brought me the idea that people have been reduced to small balls in the lottery. That's what we have, uh, what, what's happening with, with these human lives and what, with the potential that they have. Uh, what, what is the reason? Why is this happening? Uh, do we have some form of responsibility in this or not? Um, lots of questions, so I hope some of you may give some answers. Please be free. Yes. <clears throat> what is the future of Akuma? Um, what what um, can we expect for the future for this? these people. We have to work on the question how do we welcome them in Europe, but we also have to think about uh, what can we do to give them another dream, another dream to have a better life in, their, in Africa. And I just want to get, give you an information that we are preparing a side event for uh, the 25th of January next year, uh, talking about the responsibility of European companies 
to work in Africa to understand that they have a responsibility in the development of these countries, to give a future, to give a dream to the people living there. If they don't have the dream to have a better future in Africa, more and more of them will come to Europe. And this, if we have now to work on the question of welcoming them here, yeah, we also have to work on the reason why they come here. Yeah. Poverty, war, uh, human rights violations, uh, climate change, there are many reasons we have here in the Council of Europe to work on the future and on the cause, the reason why they come here. Thank you. I think this is very relevant what you said. Um, this is pointing to our own responsibility, not only of bringing them or helping them when they come to Europe or fighting against them when they come to Europe, whatever position you take. It is solving the problem there. And we have a responsibility in that to give them back the dream that you talked about. I think it's perfectly correct. Um, I don't know, Manuel? Yeah, if, if I can add something, uh, that's, that's something that fights with our hypocrisy in terms of uh, all, uh, countries of origin, our countries of origin, because I always talk in Italy about the fact that we should not, and I, I just uh, submitted yesterday a motion for resolution in the Council of Europe about that, we should not spread weapons through all the world, and just one week ago it was found in Yemen, a bomb made in Italy, we have a law to avoid selling weapons to the country where there is a war uh, in, uh, in these days, and it, it, through, it, it crossed through Germany where it was uh, sold to Arabia, Saudi Arabia, and then it, it, it went on the head of the children in Yemen. So that's the path. So we should act as politicians in our own country to stop this I don't say the word that I want to say. <laughs> uh, uh, and the other thing is about companies. It's, it's, I, I've been working as cooperant in, uh, in cooperation in the uh, in, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo before to do this, uh, to, to be a politician. And I saw with my eyes what our companies are doing there. They are lead grabbing, they are um, uh, exploiting uh, all the uh, resources that they have, and they don't, they don't even employ people from the country because they bring our own people there. So at the end, what we are doing is that we are cleaning, cleaning our own uh, feelings with NGOs. We, we spend a lot of money with NGOs that are fixing the problem that we do with our companies. So uh, that's the base. I think that w w uh, something that they say in Africa is that they don't need more of us. They need less of us <laughs> in their own country. So that's the base. Quite a strong conclusion. Um, we, we, we really need to think of closing because it's three minutes to two. We have to be in committees and um, Mr. Di Stefano needs to defend his report. So we have to close. I want to thank all of you because it's not easy to organize things between one and two in the Council of Europe side events. There's a lot of other events. Thank you for coming. Um, all of you have a special interest in this topic. Obviously, you will follow, I guess, the work that we're doing in the Committee of Migration, but you can also feed us. You can also give ideas to us how to do our work better. And if you are specifically interested in the movie, uh, you can contact me or one of my collaborators so that we can give you the contact details. Celine is here. Of course, she will be happy to tell you how to spread this movie. It, uh, it still has to be released officially, I think. It was in the cinemas already. It was already. Right. It will be uh, on DVD uh, in a couple of months. Okay. But it is available also for screenings like here. So yes. if you should be interested, you can come to me and I will be happy to help you. Okay. Thank you very much all for being here.